time for What's Burning, presented by Bill LaCasse and SRG Financial Advisors. Welcome into What's Burning. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. It's that time of the year. Is it the best time of the year? It absolutely is the best time of the year. Generosity and love and mm. care is in the air. I, I love, love you, it. man. I love you too, baby. <laughs> it's going to be a great show today, presented by SRG Financial Advisors, home of the Mile Marker Formula, and a time to be thankful and grateful. I got to tell you, Chris, I am so thankful for Bill and Janice oh, LaCasse. Absolutely. Crew. We have just such an amazing group of sponsors. I mean, Bill and Janice over at SRG, Nina and Cami and Steve over at OZ. Ozark Barge and Dock Services. They've been around for 35 years building the best docks of the Lake of the Ozarks and they support us at Lake TV. We love them and our veterinary, right? I mean, how huge are they? I mean, they're, they're awesome. They're really taking over the, the landscape of it in mid-Missouri as far as taking care of your furry friends and man, through our sports, they are giving away uh, spays, neuters, every made free throw in basketball this year is five pounds of dog yeah. food to Ozark's Cat and Canine, man. Tell you what, they're doing a lot, and it's because they care yep. about our community like a lot of our, our partners. So yep. we are blessed, my man. We really are. And you're blessed because we got an incredible show for you today. Jenny Wall from the Watchdog Report. She's keeping up with all the politics. Appreciate, we, appreciate we her did. work. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're going to bring you some special Christmas memories, DJ Kyle and me and the whole Lake TV staff. That's funny. You're That'll gonna, be you're great. Gonna, you're going to like that. Yep. <laughs> Furry friends. We got a ton of cats. Apparently, yeah. Megan is herding cats this week on Furry Friends. And you sit down with a new city administrator at Lake Ozark, Harrison Fry. Yeah, and I'm looking really forward to sitting down with him because, man, he is very, very astute, so smart, and he's a young guy who's come in in some challenging circumstances. Yep. And the way he's handled it and what he's done for the city, huge. I'm excited to hear what he has to say about the lift of nightly rentals in Lake Ozark. Absolutely. So all that coming right up for you. Coming up next, we've got Jenny Wall with the Watchdog Report, so don't go anywhere. While the financial services industry for years has focused on products, pricing, and performance, or things we refer to at SRG as the how, our focus for our clients has always been around their why. And without fail, over all these years, those whys have centered around family, occupation, and recreation. Think legacy issues, retirement, or achieving a work-optional lifestyle, and checking off those important things on that recreational bucket list. Our foundational approach remains a focus on the things that matter most to our clients and the things that together we can control. And where those two things overlap, that's where we live and work every day. That's SRG Financial and the Mile Marker Formula. Want a dock that will withstand the wake from a million boats? Want a dock that's different from the usual dock? Then you want Ozark Barge and Dock in Gravois Mills. Ozark Barge and Dock now celebrating 35 years of building the best dock on Lake of the Ozarks. And we guarantee every dock we build. So when it comes time to build your custom dock, trust the best and go with Ozark Barge and Dock, building the best dock at the lake for the last 35 years. Welcome back to What's Burning, getting ready for um, an amazing Christmas and New Year's, and we're hopefully uh, hoping your family's having a great time together. So we've got uh, Jenny Wall with us, back from the Watchdog Report right here. How's Jenny? I'm great. Merry Christmas. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Is this the best time of the year? No, because I don't like the cold. What? But I do love... Christmas and oh, the decorations yeah. and bah the songs humbug. and all of that. But this cold spell that's coming <laughs> is not my favorite. I cannot no. tell a lie. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you're one of those, uh, what do they call them, snowbirds. You go down south for a couple uh, of months. For a right? little while, yeah. I got to get away. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so for the next couple of months, our watchdog report for you uh, here on What's Burning. Uh, you're you're going to be gone, so uh, you'll have a fill-in here. Yes, the talented and wonderful Neil Gibbs. There you go. Will be sitting in for me on on, on the show, and uh, 
You may not want me back. Oh, he, he could finished, never replace you. He's amazing, and uh, we're so happy. I will, of course, continue to write the watchdog and, yeah. and work my connections and knowledge of what's going on in the county. And, and it's time of the year to start keeping an eye on Jefferson City. Oh, yeah. The General Assembly comes comes in, and so that takes up a, a part of the space. We try to let people know. So it's all about getting citizens involved and letting them know what they need to know so they can, they can talk to their representatives and participate hey, in their own government. It's good to know what's going on, right? Because if you don't know what's go going on, it's not going to be good. No, and if you don't uh, go sit in those meetings, you might not know. So yeah. we're getting the word out. Okay, so it's called the Watchdog Report, and it's very short. It's just, you know, uh, four pages here. So it's not like you have to, you know, spend all day or all week reading what's going on. But uh, very interesting stuff. First of all, where can people get their Watchdog Report? We put out a few... Uh, uh, printed copies around the county. You can pick them up over in Lake Ozark at the Office Neighborhood Pub. There's some at the Rusty Rooster. Fitz Tackle and Supplies over on Osage Beach Parkway, or oh, Bagnell Dam Boulevard, actually. Uh, Stokes Dock Company, Shell's Pasta, there by Petco and Target. Sunset Tire and Service, which is on 42, just where yep. you come out of Lowe's there. Yep. Uh, the Cozy Cafe on KK. Skelton Key and Lock always has a few sitting in there. And Bryant Auction, thank you, Mr. Bryant, Beckett Motors, thank you to John Beckett, and Firefly Valley Farms Coffee, which is just south on um, 5 yeah. of Camdenton. You got to check out that roasting process. It's really a fun place. Yep. And there'll be some sitting there. Smoke and Jones Barbecue uh, on North Business 5 in Camdenton. And then if you uh, happen to be out towards Climax Springs, where I live out in that direction, you can pick them up at the J7 Market, the Shoemake Auto Repair, 7 Express in there in Climax Springs, and the famous Come On In. Cafe. Wow. Always has so you a guys few. are growing. There's a whole lot more uh, distribution areas for the watch. We try to get the printed copies out physically, yep. and that alerts people to contact me. There's contact information on the the last page. Uh, the email is contact at w a t c h d a w g report dot com. Right. And people send me an email, and I'm up. Uh, well over a hundred now of people receiving them directly in their email. Wow! Okay. And yeah, our printing is limited because we do it on donation. This yeah. is all a labor of love. There's no, there's no profit margin. There's no. This is out of people's pockets. It's not like you're getting rich. On no, this, this right. is out of people's pockets, and we. I want to, you know, thank uh, the donors that have uh, contacted uh, Jessica at Design and Print, mm -hmm. which uh, Design and Print uh, will accept donations directly into our account for printing, and uh, she does a wonderful job, as you can see, and uh, we, yeah. we appreciate that. It's very nice. Okay, so let's get into mm -hmm. it. So in the December issue, which actually says November on top. So I know, I made a mistake. Don't be, uh, yeah, so so the December <laughs> issue is the latest Mine, one. I went through and changed the others right, with okay, my good. little pen good. on 150 copies. When do you put these out every month? When do they come out? Around about the 15th okay, of right each in the middle month. Of the month. Okay. Yeah, they cool. tend to come out on the, on the 15th. So the December one, uh, right off the top, courthouse renovation. You're <laughs> yes. keeping an eye on that what's going on with that quickly yeah well many good things oh good um, uh, the most important thing is that all the the two commissioners that are staying and the new presiding commissioner are reading the contract and talking with Verigi and realize that things are not as they should be yeah um, I, I know that that uh, at uh, a recent meeting, Don Williams was chosen to be the the point of contact. Okay. So Melvin Miller, the maintenance supervisor, who was the unauthorized contact, has now been set aside, and and Don has taken that over. Um, one of the things that we had asked for was consistency between status reporting and invoicing. Mm -hmm. And I'm anxious to follow up for the January article to see if that was accomplished. Good. Um, Verigi is pushing back. They kind of like to keep it confusing. Sure. And we can't have that. No, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I noticed an interesting thing. You had a note from the new Commissioner Ike Skelton in here, mm -hmm. uh, and 
And one of the interesting things Ike said was, interesting tidbit, I was informed one day as a result of our win, all contracts with the county must be re-signed by the new incoming uh, presiding commissioner, which means he gets to go over all those contracts again. Yes, they're, they're going to uh, make up a list mm -hmm. of the contract with the vendor, a synopsis of what each contract does, and the expiration date, so that the commissioners can work with that list to prioritize and see what's important and what's not. Now, can they and go back and say this is a stupid contract. We're going to redo that. Can they do they have the power to do that? If the contract is null and void without that new commissioner's signature, then I would think that they could. Wow. I really I, I it was news to me yeah. uh, uh, when he wrote that, but uh, I I did uh, participate in the discussion about making a list. So you can see the whole thing. Yeah. So you know what your priorities are. And I think some very good things. I mean, I Ike is coming in uh, but gaining from all the experience that James has had yeah. of being used and abused Go for Hagen. two years. Yeah, yeah James, sorry, James Gohagen. Commissioner Gohagen has, I don't know how he survived what he has in, mm -hmm. his, in his time at the county. He was locked out of the ledger system, we've discovered, and wow. intend to do an article on that and how that was resolved and was just omitted out of the, the loop by yeah. the other two commissioners. Yeah, it was really not shut good. out, it's, wasn't it? It's, it's like junior high school. And kind it's of ridiculous. attacked, you know, at one point. Well, Melvin Miller, the maintenance supervisor that's eyeball deep in the in the Verigee problems, was one of those that was involved in that hmm. incident and hmm. I believe should have resigned then. I believe should resign now because he is the person who brought Verigee into the county raced on previous work and said, oh, hey, we need to do this, this, and this. Right. The January article, uh, so I'm comfortable, let me say this, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable that the commissioners are going to get a hold of this and yeah. get this project finished. Um, do I think we're gonna spend too much money on work that could have been done uh, less expensively with more bids? Yes, I do. Probably, yeah. But at this point, with Greg Hastie's influence of signing that contract, and, and interesting, I, uh, in all the sunshine emails, there's no communication between county attorney Charlie McElyay and Verigee. But there is in an email from Ellie Blankenship at Verigee, something says that county legal has approved the terms and conditions of the contract. Hmm. But I don't see where that actually happened. They might have just been making that up on the fly. Could huh? be probable deniability. Could be nobody really saw it. Well, but Greg signed the sign the contract. Interesting. And I see so. something here in the uh, December report where you say, I have filed public uh, corruption complaint with the Missouri Attorney General's office. I did. And they sent me back a letter and they said that it it was uh, interesting information, but I was in the wrong place. I needed to go to the state auditor. Okay. So because I know. named in the complaint the county auditor, Jimmy Laughlin. Uh, and I believe because he was a major uh, interface with Verigee until the commissioners kind of woke up and took it over. Right. Too late, but it is what it is right. now. Okay. But I think they're going to proceed. All right. So it is the watchdog report. This is the December report. January's will be coming out in mid-January and yes, she'll keep us updated on all of that. You also, which we don't have time to get into, a Missouri State update and with Jeff City and all that stuff. So we'll catch up on that stuff in months to come. There'll be plenty of that in January and February. Okay. And again, how do they contact you to get on your list? You can call and leave a message, 660-238- 6514 or email at contact at watchdogreport.com. Watchdog is spelled W A T C H D A W G. There you report. go. All right, coming up next Thank you. Christmas memories with DJ Kyle and the Lake TV staff. We're going to have some fun. Don't go anywhere. While the financial services industry for years has focused on products, pricing, and performance, or things we refer to at SRG as the how, our focus for our clients has always been around their why. And without fail, over all these years, those whys have centered around family, occupation, and recreation. Think legacy issues, retirement, or achieving a work-optional lifestyle, and checking off those important things on that recreational bucket list. 
Our foundational approach remains a focus on the things that matter most to our clients and the things that together we can control. And where those two things overlap, that's where we live and work every day. That's SRG Financial and the Mile Marker Formula. There's a new radio station at the lake, a radio station that's geared towards the community, a radio station where you can have a hand in what we do. Welcome to Key Radio, a community-based radio station that invites you to be a part of the solution. We encourage you to become a content creator. That's right, you provide the content. Listen in at 89.3 or online at keyradio.live. To find out more about becoming a content creator, call 573-280-0532. Your furry friends are more than pets, they're family. And at Our Veterinary, we understand that. With multiple locations, we can service your pets when and where you need it. Our team of professionals offer routine wellness, orthopedic care from broken bones to joint repair, and even emergency services. We are ready to welcome your pet to our family with medical or preventative care. Our Veterinary, with six convenient locations, the team providing exceptional care for your pet when and where you need it. Welcome back to What's Burning. Merry Christmas. We're into that kind of the, the season. Is there a better time of the year, DJ Kyle, than uh, Christmas time? Uncle Chris, I would say for me, there is no better time. I love Christmas. I love the family, the friends, and just how everyone seems a little brighter and has a little little extra hop in their step, I yeah, guess. Yeah, you know, more I, love I in just, their heart. I yeah, agree. I agree. An extra smile for you. Now, I know when, when we talk with you about smiling, there, there's no extra smile because you're always smiling, right? But uh, yeah, it's kind of nice to run into people that have that holiday spirit mm -hmm. thing, right? I, and I also feel like uh, more of the community, more of the people help each other out. Yeah. I would dare to say that this time, is the most wonderful time of the year. Hey, I think uh, I've heard that I before, right? I think I have right? too, I think. It's the most wonderful time. <laughs> no, 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 no. hang on, not let's me. not sing. That's Come right, on okay, well you can <laughs> sing, I can't sing. So what we were thinking was, uh, I mean, we were just chatting and saying, hey, we should talk about our favorite Christmas memories and our, maybe our worst Christmas memories, mm. if there is such a thing. Uh, so we thought, well, okay, well, let's do that on What's Burning, right? Uncle Chris, do you have a favorite Christmas uh, memory? You know what? I, I sat down and I thought about it, and I actually have three. Is that okay? Oh, of course. Can yeah. I do three? Yeah, you could do three. Okay. So uh, my first one is kind of a general one from when I was growing up, right? Uh, kind of a, a couple years that kind of fall together. Like I remember driving around with a family looking at Christmas lights. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time as a kid, I kind of didn't like it because I was stuck in the back seat just driving <laughs> around town, you know, but now that I look back at it, it's kind of like, oh, that was kind of neat. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, right around that same time, it's like going to midnight church service, oh, yeah. which really was at midnight back then, mm -hmm. you know, and walking through the crunchy snow and stuff like that. Those were neat, fun memories. Oh, you know? yeah. So so that's like the first one All right. that comes out. Um, then when I, I started my working career, I traveled a lot. You know, I got to live all over the country and all over the world. And I remember I spent a Christmas in London one year, which was really cool wow. just because of the different traditions, you sure. know, and going down on, I think it was Regent Street is their big Christmas street and, and doing that. And then they have, you know, like Boxing Day, which we don't uh -huh. do here, yep. that they do over there. And so that was a lot of fun. And uh, and then I actually got engaged on Christmas Day. Did you really? Yes, I did. I So I went out and I got the ring, right? And and I wrapped it up and I put it under the tree and it sat there for like a month. Oh, right? how did you even do that? Did you check on it every day? I, you like I, walk I, I did. I there made sure is. she wasn't like, you know, tearing into <laughs> it. Open it up. You know, and I, I, di I didn't put it in a ring box. I put it like in a shirt box. So she thought I was getting her a shirt or something yeah. like that. And then she opens it on Christmas morning and, and you know, we get engaged. So Aww. those are some pretty good memories, right? That is a right? great memory. Yeah. That is a great okay, memory. Okay, how about you, DJ Kyle? What's your favorite for, Christmas? For me, I would, I would have to say the Christmas that stands out most in my mind was lots of years ago, we used to all, all of our extended family would all show up to my grandparents' house in Richland. And so they, they lived out in the country area in Richland and so, we were there and then there was this huge ice storm that came in yeah. and just iced all the family in. 
no power for it felt like it was days, like three or four days. I'm not sure. I was I was young, so I'm not sure. Right. But I remember we had candles going, and you know, back then there was no cell phones, but no TV, nothing. We all just sat, we played games. I also remember, I recall every one of the cousins would go with the candles and we'd dip our fingers in the wax and we'd make our, you know, little <laughs> wax fingers. Yeah. But that we had such a great time. And then all the grandkids decided, you know, it'd be really fun with all this ice and snow that we have going on. My grandparents had this long driveway down the hill out to the main road. We thought, well, that driveway is perfect for two sleds to go right down. So we made it even more icy. So where, when everything did start to melt, that driveway was still this much ice because we were piling snow on it and we took our sleds up and down there. So that was, that was one of my most favorite memories. And my second most favorite memory for Christmas, I'm sure I'm gonna get in trouble because I never told my parents this. Oh but no. When I was young and I started my DJ business, we, we went to the mall one day and I remember picking out this microphone. It was a silver microphone and I was like, that was like my professional microphone because before then, I mean, I was maybe 11 years old or 12 years old. Before then I was using like a little plastic microphone right, or something. Yeah. So this, this was an exciting time for me and I wanted this microphone so bad. And so there was presents under the tree and one day I was sick and I was at home by myself. And I remember looking under that tree going, that box looks a lot like a microphone box. <laughs> and so I did. The you unthinkable. Tore into it? Oh. I tore that oh. tape off and looked. So now my parents are now gonna know and I'm probably in trouble. So right. but that that was my most favorite one. Ah, those are such great memories, I right? I love Christmas. But see, you know what? A story like that though tells me that you have been an entertainer all your life. If what the the thing you wanted most for Christmas was a microphone uh -huh, yeah. at like eleven years old, I mean that's an entertainer right there. Yeah, so. I, I loved it. It was it was so fun. But then I had to act really excited when I opened the microphone on Christmas Day. Yeah. I, well, I hey, didn't yeah. know that this is what it was. You know what my parents did? They they caught me doing that too. And they hid that present from oh, me. Oh, you got it. And so I was like, where's my present? <laughs> and then, you know, they hid it in the closet. They had to bring it out yep. later. So that's uh, the way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so great Christmas memories. We both love Christmas. Do you have any bad Christmas memories? Do you have a worst Christmas? You know, I, I cannot think of a worst Christmas. Even to me, even like a bad Christmas is still a great Christmas. You yeah. get to spend time with family and friends. I do recall one Christmas, I uh, woke up and my young daughter, Katie, was sick. Oh, and yeah. so we, we weren't able to go to the family Christmas thing. And But we still, we made the, the best of it. We made some soup at home. We opened some presents while she was laying on the couch. So we still made the best of, of what Christmas we could during that time. But uh, I remember she woke up and she was really sick and she was so sad that she had to miss all the Christmas activities and stuff. But yeah. that would probably be, and, and again, it's not necessarily that it was a bad Christmas. It was a great Christmas with my daughter and I, but yeah, uh, yeah that would probably be the one that I, I felt so bad that she was sick. But how even about you? that kind of turned into a good memory. Yeah, it really did. It really did. Yeah, isn't that amazing how that happens? Okay, so for me, uh, me too. I mean, I don't really have any bad Christmases. Uh, so my my least favorite Christmases were just when I was alone, right? Mm -hmm. So when I'm out in these places around the world, you know, and and you're just there alone, right? Yeah. So uh, I, I was doing play-by-play -play for a, a pro basketball team, and we had a holiday road trip. So we weren't home. We were out traveling around, you know, and I just remember like on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning or something, sitting there watching uh, Sound of Music, right? Mm -hmm. Remember Julie Andrews uh, and the Sound of Music? And, and I love that movie, by the way, it's greatness. But uh, just thinking, oh man, you know, I'm, where's my family kind yeah. of a thing. Yeah. So it was a little bit lonely, but, um, but again, even that, I look back on it fondly because, you know, I loved what I was doing and all that stuff. So, oh yeah, I bet so. So it's kind of neat, yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited because this Christmas, uh, my fiance and I get to spend Christmas in Germany. Wow. So we get to go and spend Christmas Day in Germany. And and when you were talking about seeing Christmas in just 
just a different way, a different light, you yeah. know, from, from different cultures and stuff. So I'm very excited about uh, going and seeing that and all the Christmas villages that they have set up and all the, the castles towns and stuff. And all oh, that? yeah, yeah. Wow. I'm very excited. It's going to be a good time. I'm a little bit time. jealous. Are you going to bring back some pictures? For Absolutely. Us? Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll have some pictures of a German Christmas. There you go. Uh, and a little German beer, maybe. maybe yeah, bring yeah. some of that back for Probably some of that, there too. Yeah. I wonder what our staff, you know, you think our staff uh, has some good Christmas memories and bad Christmas I, memories? I bet they do. I would like to hear from uh, what the staff thinks about uh, their favorite Christmas or maybe worse Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, let's check that out. Man, I gotta say, my favorite Christmas memory has gotta be, I'm immediately gonna cheat and just like name a whole bunch of them, but like my Christmases growing up in Germany uh, were incredible. And I've, I've said it for years, uh, nobody does Christmas as well as Germany does. I remember I was a little kid uh, at the time and I remember going to the Christmas markets in, the, uh, in downtown Bamberg and um, they were just magical. Uh, there would be these stands set up, everyone would have a cup of hot chocolate, it would be outdoors. Uh, there would be these warm Christmas lights, all of them, not, not the bright colored ones, but those like warm golden ones. Oh my gosh, it was, it was really magical. And, and I remember I was fascinated because all of the stands, all of the vendors, a lot of them had these like handmade wooden toys. And you know, being the age I am, uh, a lot of what I grew up with was those like mass produced cheap plastic toys the, with the, the flashy bright colors, but I remember getting this little marionette puppet, this little wooden marionette puppet that I just loved. Um, so, so just these, these beautiful handmade pieces, and, and we were in a small apartment at the time, but it was uh, the first Christmases that I spent with uh, my dad, my mom and my dad together. Um, so it was, it was a really great experience, and I mean, I grew up with a, a castle visible through my window. Europe has so many castles. They kill for a bungalow or a shack. They're just castles pouring out of their ears. But yeah, that's it's, it's hard to beat that, you know. It's really good memories. So uh, full heavy enough. <laughs> yeah, bah humbug. So a least favorite Christmas memory. Well, I'm gonna share this, although I don't really remember this. If I did remember it, I'd remember it a little differently. But my parents tell it like this. So when I was like four, we lived in the Branson area and there's a really bad ice storm over Christmas. And so pipes were frozen in our house and we were going up to Springfield where our grandparents lived to do Christmas and see them. Well, Will decided it was a good idea that I wanted to find out before anybody else when that water unfroze and was back on. So naturally, the best way to do it was to turn that faucet on full blast. I didn't remember or realize that I had stopped the sink in the process. So sat there, the sink was stopped, the water was on full blast, but luckily for me the pipes were frozen and we head off to Springfield. Well, three days later, my dad decides to head back down to the house and check in on everything and see if the pipes are still frozen and he came into a... Uh, a mess. Uh, the, the house was flooded, it all ran into the basement where our drop ceiling was hanging and Dad said it looked like a jungle. Um, they haven't let me forget about that every single Christmas, yet the way I remember it was it had to be one of my sisters. Uh, I would never be capable of something like that. But if I had to put uh, a least favorite Christmas memory down, that would that would probably be it. Where, where, are, the pretz, where are the pretzels? <laughs> At least the snacks are nice. Am I just eating because I'm bored? Best Christmas memory. I mean, there's so many over the years. Our family's always just loved Christmas. We do numerous celebrations, both sides of the family. Of course, now I've got unique side of the family as well, but without a doubt, last year, Brinley, for the first time, getting to walk down the hallway into the living room to see what Santa had brought and just enjoy that with my own family, my wife, my daughter, in our living room for the first time was uh, was pretty special, won't forget that. And uh, there's lots, but so far, that's it. And I'm confident uh, over the next few years I'll be making new favorite Christmas memories. Do I seriously have to do this? Really? Yes. Really? Yeah. Take it for the team. Bah humbug. That, was that, that, wasn't, that probably wasn't believable, was it? That was perfect. Hmm, so I don't really have like a worst Christmas memory, I don't think. You know, there's those Christmases that don't exactly go how you plan. 
um, but I've reached a point in my life in uh, my old age uh, <laughs> where I've kind of looked back on those things where I uh, realized that they're were, they were good because you know you don't realize how fortunate you are until you are kind of forced to step back and look at the bad but find the good. So I don't really have a worst one per se. Um, I have, and I don't really have a best one either. They were all pretty great. Uh, there's not one that like specifically stands out to me, but I have best like aspects of Christmas. So one side of my family uh, likes to do these like weird gifts, uh, these like traditional gifts. So I had this great grandma who would pack gifts in cornflakes boxes. Literally, she would just save the cornflakes boxes and that's what she used for gifts for Christmas. She would shove the gift in there, wrap it, and then somebody else in the family randomly gave somebody a rubber chicken. So then every year, somebody got a rubber chicken in a cornflakes box. Like every single year. We would do like the like gift exchange around Christmas time or whatever. Somebody always got the rubber chicken in a cornflakes box. And then my same grandma um, would use uh, my grandpa's old like Prince Albert tobacco cans, like metal cans, right? They're empty. She didn't throw it away. All of the grandkids got Prince Albert tobacco cans. I still have some. Like <laughs> she just always gave them out. So. I have some weird Christmas memories. Uh, and there was some other just strange, like white elephant type gifts. Somebody made slippers out of bedpans. My family's weird. If you uh, have any questions as to why I am the way I am, that'll explain it. <laughs> <laughs> well, those those are some great memories. Wow. But I'm glad that mine wasn't as, as weird as that wow. last one. I'm, that... I'm guessing so, man. <laughs> After that, we, I feel good about our yeah, memories. Yeah, mine's a great memory now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Merry Christmas. It is such a pleasure Dude, Merry Christmas to be to able you. to spend Christmas and uh, uh, everything with you and Shay and our whole Lake TV family. So. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for letting me do uh, come on and do this with yeah, you. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. And from all of us here at Lake TV, to you and all of your family, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Bless you all. While the financial services industry for years has focused on products, pricing, and performance, or things we refer to at SRG as the how, our focus for our clients has always been around their why. And without fail, over all these years, those whys have centered around family, occupation, and recreation. Think legacy issues, retirement, or achieving a work-optional lifestyle, and checking off those important things on that recreational bucket list. Our foundational approach remains a focus on the things that matter most to our clients and the things that together we can control. And where those two things overlap, that's where we live and work every day. That's SRG Financial and the Mile Marker Formula. Want a dock that will withstand the wake from a million boats? Want a dock that's different from the usual dock? Then you want Ozark Barge and Dock in Gravois Mills. Ozark Barge and Dock now celebrating 35 years of building the best dock on Lake of the Ozarks. And we guarantee every dock we build. So when it comes time to build your custom dock, trust the best and go with Ozark Barge and Dock, building the best dock at the lake for the last 35 years. Your furry friends are more than pets, they're family, and at Our Veterinary, we understand that. With multiple locations, we can service your pets when and where you need it. Our team of professionals offer routine wellness, orthopedic care from broken bones to joint repair, and even emergency services. We are ready to welcome your pet to our family with medical or preventative care. Our Veterinary, with six convenient locations, the team providing exceptional care for your pet when and where you need it. Back here on What's Burning, presented by SRG Financial Advisors, home of the Mile Marker Formula. And as promised, we have City Administrator from the City of Lake Ozark, Harrison Fry, joins us. Welcome to the show, Harrison. Thank you for having me in, Will. It's appreciated. Uh, we're glad to have you on our Christmas rendition of What's Burning. And so I'm thankful you were able to sneak away because hopefully you got some big plans over the Christmas break, right? Yeah, looking for the opportunity. Uh, my wife and I are going to be going back east, going home for the couple of days, see the family, see some kids, maybe give some presents out, yeah. and then uh, make our way back to the lake after the holidays wrapped. 
Yeah, and you'll be making your way back to uh, what should be a busy start to 2023, because <laughs> for those of you that don't know, might be out there living under a rock, a lot of new, a lot of change happening with Lake Ozark, and most pressing and most recent is the nightly rentals that you guys, uh, the Board of Aldermen, had voted on. So, uh, from what I understand, that passed the night lifting the ban and so kind of walk us through that and where that stands and what's next. So there's still one final step left in the uh, conversation on changing the regulations around nightly rentals in the city of Lake Ozark. Uh, a few months ago it was originally brought up to the Board of Aldermen in a work session as a recommendation from our Citizens Road Committee um, as a means of just uh, like you said changing some elements in the city maybe to grow and expand. Uh, from there it was sent to planning and zoning for two months. They deliberated, took a vote, recommended the passage of the change to the Board of Aldermen. The board uh, passed it in the first reading earlier this month and then on January 10th uh, they are slated to hold the second reading of that where uh, it will either pass or, or fail at that point and become law. And in the second reading the same Alderman would then vote again that previously voted for two. So bearing any changes it looks like this would pass and then so after that January 10th meeting if that is the case how long until nightly rentals are legal within the city limits? If the bill is passed as presented on January 10th, then this would be considered as good as law, uh, effective, um, you know, the gospel truth on January 11th. Wow, so then it goes right into mm -hmm. effect. And can you touch on from a city perspective, because I think it's worth noting that as much as the city wants to do what's best for every single person, you have to look at things as what's best as a whole and for the city moving forward. And so nightly rentals, having a ban, was kind of hindering some growth potentially. So why is allowing nightly rentals in Lake Ozark so crucial or so good for the city? Sure. So I, I think, you know, 95, 99 percent of the business that comes before the Board of Aldermen, it's a unanimous vote. The people who are present uh, have no reason to say you, you did the wrong thing, anything like that. This is just one of those few items that people are passionate about on both sides of the issue, and it has encouraged a lot of people to speak, to get educated, to get involved, um, which is a, a wonderful thing about government is that you can show up to a town hall meeting and have your voice heard. Yeah. Um, the folks who have been proponents of this change have cited uh, personal property rights, you know, the ability to use your property to the fullest possible extent as long as it does not um, overflow beyond your property lines and then impact your neighbors. And I think as in the two, two and a half years I worked for the city, we take a number of calls from contractors, homeowners, uh, realtors seeking zoning verifications. You know, we're getting ready to build, to buy, to sell. What can we or can we not do on this particular lot? And to date, uh, on, on some of those locations, my answer has been you can have a home there, you can't have short-term rentals, anything for a period of less than 30 days. And for a lot of folks, that's where the conversation ends. Um, so I think if, if that change has been made uh, effective next month, then uh, that conversation probably produces a better result for the, the buyer, the builder, the seller, the homeowner. And I think that's a change that, uh, again, a lot of people showed up to City Hall to speak in favor of. Yeah, and I, I also noticed over the last couple of years, since you've been with the city of Lake Ozark, almost two years now, right? Mm -hmm. A little over two years. A little yeah. over two mm -hmm. years of flying by, but in those two years, we've seen a lot of uh, issues people are passionate about on both sides, and a lot of new, um, and a lot of excitement. So outside of just the nightly Reynolds, I gotta ask why I've got you here. Is there any update on the Osage Nation casino project, or where does that stand currently? Sure. So the Osage Nation has a, a pretty informative website about the project that walks through what they consider to be their rough timeline, the scope of what they want to bring to town. And they are still in their uh, federal land trust establishment process with the federal government. Uh, they have given us every indication that once that process is completed, more information will be forthcoming. Um, they've maintained a community presence here, giving to some local nonprofits, meeting with some community leaders, but at this point, uh, really no news is, is good news, I suppose, right. and they're on the track that they have uh, anticipated they'll be able to deliver on. Yeah, and so when I look at that, if that comes to fruition, which is very much a potential reality, mm -hmm. um, you look at a lot of the new faces from Mayor Newberry uh, being new. You're our new city administrator. We've got new aldermen and a lot of seats. So a lot of new faces. And like I say, and I'll continue to say, a lot of excitement with the city of Lake Ozark. But with that comes others that may have been down here for 30, 40 years and some of this change and the addition of nightly rentals and some of the new faces might scare them a little bit and they may not see big picture, may not agree with all of it. So 
from the city of Lake Ozark, Harrison, as our city administrator, what would you say or offer to those people who may not be on board with some of this? I think that a lot of the issues um, that we've seen on this particular issue come up are more political in nature and, and really not the kind of thing I can comment on. Uh, but I look at my job as the city administrator and for what I hope our staff can deliver on is the opportunity for those folks, uh, whether they were for this or against this, to maybe gain some trust in government, um, see how the process works. Because again, nine out of 10 of the items of business we have are things that they would probably all agree are good for the city to keep us moving forward and growing in a cohesive direction. Occasionally there will be items that come up that create some division, but you expect that even within your own home. You know, yeah. I'm sure my wife and I have debated the color of the plates we're gonna have when we have guests over, things like that. Yeah. So it, there will always be issues where there's disagreement, but uh, when that occurs, you know, if we can all keep looking at the, the other nine that, that seem to have a little bit of holistic support behind them, yeah. we'll, we'll do well on that. That's super. And another thing uh, I wanted to ask you is how people watching, uh, because so many more are now involved, like, mm -hmm. you know, for City of Lake Ozark over the last two years, there's been more town hall meetings mm -hmm. that are full that we probably had collectively over the last 10 years. So I think people's interest is there. How can people watching uh, get plugged in or how can you invite them to tap into some of the resources or get involved with local government through Lake Ozark? I think the simplest, um, just easiest thing you can do, it's a couple of clicks. If you want to know the business the city is discussing, on our website, cityoflakeozark.net, there is a stay informed button and you can pick all the topics that you think are relevant for you. So it might be planning and zoning, might be community events, and you pick those topics. And when we have new information posted on those, you'll get an email or a text confirmation that says, we're talking about zoning regulations. Yeah. Uh, and then it'll give you a date, time, and a location for where that's happening. Separate from that, um, again, if you see those items that you're passionate about, I know myself, any of our department head staff members are happy to get you up to speed, fluent, address your concerns, and if it's something that's maybe beyond the scope of what we can do, uh, then you're certainly welcome to speak at those Board of Alder meetings, Planning and Zoning Commission, Utility Commission, whatever it may be, because yeah. the uh, city, as a business entity, as a government exists to serve the needs of the community, which is the people who live there. Yeah. And it can be really difficult to know what those are unless the community is present. So to keep us honest, to keep us on track, we just ask the people uh, show up, speak, and get engaged however they can. That's, that's awesome. And I also have noticed an increased effort uh, to make that information more readily available mm -hmm. and easier to access. Like, and so I, you guys must have an increased effort for your website and Facebook on getting that information mm -hmm. out. And guys like me, we appreciate that because you know mm -hmm. we can't go to every meeting. We, we don't necessarily understand a lot of the jargon that you sure. may understand. And so we appreciate that. And we encourage you guys to, to keep doing that because you know that transparency and that communication, I see it right now building trust with a lot of people, mm -hmm. a lot of businesses, and even some businesses that don't fall in Lake Ozark but are impacted by Certainly. what happens in Lake Ozark. And so I got to applaud you guys and Harrison, would you say, you know, I feel this way, and I know that you're newer to the area, but is the outlook from you and your board of aldermen and Mayor Newberry that the state of Lake Ozark is as healthy as it's been in a long time? I think from a financial standpoint, we're in a very good position, and everybody can see that as we've been able to grow by leaps and bounds yeah. there. I think from a, a staff capacity, you know, we've been able to grow um, in necessary directions, and we're still able to recruit a pretty talented, skilled, uh, staff base that also recognizes separate from collecting a paycheck and, and doing the job we're also public servants and there's a customer service element of that a going out of your way element that uh, is not present in every work environment and I think as you mentioned the increased civic engagement involvement transparency just gives us the opportunity to know if we're hitting the target if we're way off mark and from a from a policy standpoint that is invaluable I mean you, there is no greater way to know if you as a government are succeeding than hearing from your your body. Yeah, no, I certainly appreciate it, man. You're really good at, at talking, so please tell me. You're going to come back and we're going to do this more? Yeah, I, I, always happy to be in studio if the invitation's given. That is Harrison Fry, City Administrator. Man, Merry Christmas. Merry Thanks Christmas for coming. Too. We'll be right back on What's Burning after this. While the financial services industry for years has focused on products, pricing, and performance, or things we refer to at SRG as the how, our focus for our clients has always been around their why. 
And without fail, over all these years, those whys have centered around family, occupation, and recreation. Think legacy issues, retirement, or achieving a work-optional lifestyle, and checking off those important things on that recreational bucket list. Our foundational approach remains a focus on the things that matter most to our clients and the things that together we can control. And where those two things overlap, that's where we live and work every day. That's SRG Financial and the Mile Marker Formula. Want a dock that will withstand the wake from a million boats? Want a dock that's different from the usual dock? Then you want Ozark Barge and Dock in Gravois Mills. Ozark Barge and Dock now celebrating 35 years of building the best dock on Lake of the Ozarks. And we guarantee every dock we build. So when it comes time to build your custom dock, trust the best and go with Ozark Barge and Dock, building the best dock at the lake for the last 35 years. Your furry friends are more than pets, they're family. And at Our Veterinary, we understand that. With multiple locations, we can service your pets when and where you need it. Our team of professionals offer routine wellness, orthopedic care from broken bones to joint repair, and even emergency services. We are ready to welcome your pet to our family with medical or preventative care. Our Veterinary, with six convenient locations, the team providing exceptional care for your pet when and where you need it. Welcome to Furry Friends, brought to you by Our Veterinary, and we are here with Mary <laughs> Meowmy Tilly, and we have some great cats running around here. Tell us what we've got going on here in this room. Okay, so today we are back in the big cat room. It's been a while since we've been in here, because uh, we've had so many kittens lately, and we still have kittens, but now they're growing up, yeah. and they're in this room. Uh, the nice thing about our big cat room is there are kennels, but we very rarely use them. Everybody who is in here, for the most part, uh, gets to free range. Uh -huh. <laughs> They've got the whole room. They've got a tunnel and, and a catio outside that they can access. And, and we move them back here when they start getting too big for those kennels up front. Yeah. Uh, so everybody that we're seeing today, we've seen before, but they're still here and yeah. they still need a home. And uh, what a great time. It's <laughs> Christmas. You're looking for that last minute gift and you can come oh, in here, easy. get a cat. Now we would suggest not to wrap them up. Don't, don't wrap them up. Put right, a nice little bow right. on the head. This one I think might just be passing out here. I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm not sure who you have because oh, sorry, um, the one that I have is pterodactyl. Uh, he's part of the dinosaur litter. There was five brothers. We still have four of them. Oh, wow. Um, and other than this little guy, the other three that are left are pretty much identical. So in order to tell who is who, I would have to check their microchip. Gotcha. So I always tell people when I bring them back here, if you find one that you like, hang on to him. I'll go get the chip reader and we'll figure out who you've got. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we also have uh, Jacques and Pierre in here who are eight months old as well. Uh, Pierre is a solid black kitty, little mini panther. And Jacques looks like he could be one of their brothers. Oh yeah. <laughs> Almost identical. This one is just loving this. Uh, Jacques and are Pierre are these? the ones oh. who, when we featured um, a couple months back, we featured all of our six to seven month old cats. And we had a lot of them in the kitten room. And then we had two that were in a room by themselves toward the end of that episode, and that's those guys. They are still here looking for a home, and they've gotten, we, need, we needed that room for somebody else to move some down, so we moved those boys in here, and they're all having a blast. Yeah, now what, what's it take to adopt one of these? You walk in off the street, do you have to call, do you have to get an appointment? So you don't need an appointment just to come in and meet them. Um, you can come in anytime. We're open noon to four, Monday through Saturday. You can come in anytime you want just to meet them. Uh, you can fill out an application while you're here. I always tell people if you're going to be traveling from very far, uh, since we don't do same-day adoptions, I always recommend that they fill out an application online first before they come in, get pre-approved. That way, when they do come in, they only have to make one trip. Nice. Yeah. Um, but everybody in here, so our dinosaur boys, uh, 
I've known about them since the day they were born. It's mm -hmm. a lady who we work with a lot. Uh, she uh, feeds fer a feral colony in Greenview. She had been trying to trap their mother for about two years. Oh, yeah. And she finally got her back in April, uh, took her home and put her in a chicken coop, and she had her babies there. And we were initially supposed to take those guys in when they were about 10 weeks old. Uh, she was bringing them to me. I was giving them shots. We already had them on file, you know, on our records and everything. But uh, then we had the ringworm outbreak mm -hmm. in the summer of 2022. Every, every summer it's ringworm. Ringworm, ringworm. <laughs> <laughs> we hate ringworm um, because it, it shuts us down. Yeah. We can't take anybody in. We can't let anybody go if they have been exposed, if they have spots, because ringworm is one of those things that does transfer to other, other cats, mm -hmm. to dogs, to humans. Um, so we have to make sure everybody is, is clear and, and through their additional quarantine time before we can send them out of here. So yeah. all these guys have grown up here. Uh, we took the dinosaurs in. They were about five months old when we were finally able to take them in because we opened up a room specifically to take those guys in. So they've been here about three months now. And one of them finally got adopted on Saturday. A nice. uh, little cuddly little guy. Um, she was looking for the right personality for her, mm -hmm. and, and he fit the bill. And then Jacques and Pierre were part of a litter of four. Um, the lady's last name was, um, was French, and so we gave them all French names. Nice. Uh, the two little girls were fortunate enough that they uh, avoided the ringworm, and so we transferred them to a rescue over in St. Charles, Missouri, to get them out so that they didn't end up getting it, yeah. but the two little boys have been here since they were about six weeks old, and they're eight months old now, All right. so, so it's, it's high time for them to find a family. They need to find a great family, so Ozark Cat and Canine, come out, check these kittens out. I mean, they are just, they're, this is just a room full of fun. Now, now some the other thi things. The thing I love about this age is because a lot of people come in, they want tiny little kittens, because of course tiny kittens are cute and adorable. Or some people are specifically looking for an adult so that they know what personality they're going to get mm -hmm. and how big they're going to be. Uh, these guys being about eight months old, uh, they're probably pretty close to their full grown size. You know, they're going to get a little bit bigger, but you can, you, we can kind of tell now where you can't tell when they're teeny tiny. Yeah. I have one that was this big when I first met him <laughs> and he's 20 pounds oh, now. Yeah. You know, never would have guessed it. But these guys, you can kind of get an idea how big they're going to be and their personalities are really starting to come out. So you can tell which ones are more playful, which ones are more snuggly, mm -hmm. you know, depending on what exactly Exactly it is. Yeah, the one I was holding, that was the snuggly <laughs> one, I feel like. So now, some other ways that people can help uh, your, your organization out is you have your angel tree. Mm -hmm. And when I walked into the building today, that, that angel tree was just stuff all underneath it. Mm -hmm. I love it. So there's a lot of people that are helping, but there's still a lot of need, um, a lot of those cards that they right. can take off the tree. Right. So tell us a little bit about the yeah. angel tree. I think I put about a hundred tags on our tree here at the shelter to begin with. And then we have a secondary tree this year at Red's Barbecue in Lori that had about 40 tags on it. Um, the tags are color coded. So there's a so quick glance. You can look at the color of the writing on the tags. Uh, one color for cats, one color for dogs, one color for just like for general mm -hmm. supplies like cleaning and things like that. Um, come in or stop by Reds and pull some tags off the tree, go buy what it says on there, and then you can either drop it back off at that location or they can bring it by here. Yeah. And we try to, uh, through the month of December, as long as it's not something we need right then, we try to let it build up under the tree because, you know, that way people can see, you know, what all has been donated and, yeah. and how grateful we are for everybody who's helping out. But. Uh, like this morning, we pulled all the dog food out from under the tree just because we needed it for our food barn. <laughs> we got to use it now. Yeah, that's, and we, that's, that's we got to use for. it. So. Absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, uh, tell us about uh, some of your Christmas stuff that you have going on. Okay. So, um, other than the angel tree, we've got some closures coming up for the holidays. Um, Christmas falls on Sunday this year, so mm -hmm. the board of directors has decided that uh, we're going to do the thing like the federal um, places do, the banks and all, and we are going to close on Monday as well. Gotcha. So we will be closed the 24th, the 25th, and the 26th. Okay. 
And then uh, for New Year's, we will just be closed New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. All right. Nice. Um, as far as the 24th goes, we are going to be closed to the public, but I'm going to go ahead and come in um, and be in the office trying to get caught up on some stuff <laughs> for the end of the year. So if I do have somebody who needs to do, uh, you know, don't, doesn't want to take the kitty home until Christmas Eve, you know, if they're getting it for a gift, um, then you know I could probably make some appointments that day to do adoptions if we need to. Well, nice. Well, let's uh, hopefully we'll get these uh, cats adopted out this year. And uh, thank you so much, Mary, for uh, joining us today on another Furry Friends. <laughs> While the financial services industry for years has focused on products, pricing, and performance, or things we refer to at SRG as the how, our focus for our clients has always been around their why. And without fail, over all these years, those whys have centered around family, occupation, and recreation. Think legacy issues, retirement, or achieving a work-optional lifestyle, and checking off those important things on that recreational bucket list. Our foundational approach remains a focus on the things that matter most to our clients and the things that together we can control. And where those two things overlap, that's where we live and work every day. That's SRG Financial and the Mile Marker Formula. It's Uncle Chris along with Wild William, and we got a great cup of coffee this week for you. How about nightly rentals in the city of Lake Ozark? Mm. They on, they off? Yeah, I know a lot of pros and cons there, and you will talk with Mayor Newberry about all of that. Plus, at Niangua's Inn debuted Friday, really good results. A really special hometown hero for us this that week. And 12 days of Christmas giveaways on this week's cup of coffee. Oh my goodness, that was a great show, wasn't it? What's burning? Right here on Lake TV, brought to you by the great folks at SRG Financial Advisors, Bill and Janice. That was so much fun, that show. It's almost like we're not even working, right? So wait, that's like you said. I, I mean, that's what I said. And you, that's the way it's supposed to be, Well, yeah. yep. You know, that is the way it's supposed to be. Hey, also want to give a shout out to Nina and her crew at Ozark Barge and Dock, building the best dock at the lake for the last 35 years. And of course, those furry friends, all those cats out there yeah. being crowded by DJ Kyle. <laughs> we're excited too because Kyle tried it out, but you guys are in for a treat because Megan is going to be taking over furry friends. And so you guys will get to see her all year in mm -hmm. 23. Uh, and we just love Megan. And she's such a big part of what's burning and, and new things coming yep. uh, in the new year. We're excited to tell you about in regards to this show, aren't we? Really big things like a whole new name yeah. and uh, all that stuff. Should we let it out of the bag or not? No, 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 no. I'm still, I'm still so excited that I can't wait to see if Santa actually comes this year oh. because uh, Unique was telling me, well, there's this, there's that. I'm like, any of that could have kept oh. me on the well, naughty he, list. He's going to bring you a big lump of coal this year, <laughs> hey, right? No, you've been good this year. I wanted year. to bring me a puppy from Ozark's Cat and Canine. I also wanted to give a shout out to our veterinary, yep. uh, the official veterinary of Lake TV. Man, what a show from Uncle Chris, from DJ Kyle, from Megan, from Wild Will and our entire crew. Merry Christmas, God bless, and thank you for watching What's Burning.